Hello, this is Mark Nelson. What you're about to see is a series of concept drawings and a little demonstration on how I build my concept drawings for my comic book Thunder Hunters. The second set is dealing with invertebrates or arthropods or the insects that you'll find crawling around in the Thunder Hunters world. Invertebrates, animals without backbone, arthropods. Let's try insects. That's something I really do love to design and work on. But now, when you think about it, what you've got to think is very simply, the insect has got three body parts. It's got the head, it's going to have a thorax, which the legs come out of, and it's going to have an abdomen. So let's just play with this shape. Let's make this head a really big shape. And I want to play with this idea of maybe a really big thorax too. But then I'm going to play with a little tiny, little tiny abdomen. So let's see what we can kind of come up with. And play with this. Now the other thing that I'm going to do too is I'm thinking about sometimes even leaf hoppers and things like that. So I'm going to raise the eyes up onto some stalks and let's give them a nice elliptical sort of almost what we could classify as a mantis type of thing. And then we'll come down and we'll think about the plates that might come in in the jaw. And then because of that, we're also, excuse me, going to think about the little, excuse me again, the arms that might come in and pull food or sections of food or grasp into this little guy. So now we've got that. But, okay, so now all of a sudden we've got a thorax. We got a little tiny abdomen, and I'm going to put just a little tiny kind of a stinger or something hidden in there. I'm going to give the abdomen a couple little sections just to move it around. And this guy's starting to take shape as an interesting character. Let's get rid of this little line here and see what we can do. Okay, so let's start going in and let's build. So let's take the eyes. Let's come in and start thinking about how this could become a beautiful shape. Our stock can come in. We'll create a little bit of a mm, textural surface to it so it's not exactly just so smooth. So it might have kind of a little bit of a thorns. No, I shouldn't say thorns, that's a plant. But spikes. Spikes will be part of what that is there. So what that maybe means too is let's bring this in and let's just think that we'll make this guy also a little bit spikier and give him that characteristic of uh, almost a little bit of a rhinoceros. Adding that quality into it. So we'll pull this head back. And we'll bring that shape in. We'll put our other eye in on its stock. And we'll just increase the contour to pop this out a little bit more. That light and dark side as we were talking about before. Okay. So let's come in here. Let's take this little mouth. And we'll make some of these things just have little sort of grabber flat ends. Okay, so we need to have those little guys coming in. We'll have that. We'll have a little bigger set coming along. Now, the thing that's kind of neat about designing insects for me is that the skeleton is on the outside and all the muscles are on the inside. Which, you know, as they say, animals without backbones, but, you know, when you're thinking of arthropods and things like this, it, you know, 
it's they have an exoskeleton, whereas we have sort of an endoskeleton, which is covered in um, muscle and flesh and everything else. So what I'm going to do is give him like almost two little mouths here, a bigger flap here, this, and then maybe the real mouth that might come right in there. So let's put that in. Okay. So all of a sudden, our head is taking shape. Now, let's come in here, and what I'm going to do is refine this shape a little bit more. I'm going to create sort of a bulge here and another bulge here. But I'm going to want these to kind of feel like they're rounding. And then as we come up in here, what I'm going to do is let's take and cut some little holes out here for the legs and the third leg back there. So depending on how many legs you want to have, most insects or arthropods are going to have six. But that doesn't mean that you as a designer can't give them either A less or B more in adding those kind of things. So let's do it. Let's go. We're going to come down to one joint. So I'm going to put just like a little circle here. We'll bring in another joint. And let's bring this leg up. And let's just say that this leg joint is going to be more of the supportive leg. So joint. And then we'll do that. And this leg will be the other sort of balance. Maybe a little bit heavier. Joint. Come down. And I just want to give them long legs because I kind of like that contrast of this sort of big head, mouth, body, long-legged kind of critter. So if we come in here and we just think about how these little spikes might go up a little bit, come out at angles as they're moving across that form. So we can do this one. We'll make this more of a almost a raking kind of exterior to that skeleton. So we have this. This is going to come down. We'll refine that. And then we can just get rid of that. And a little bit of that. And we'll get the little joint here in between the abdomen. That first big plate. And maybe add a little kind of fingery shapes or, you know, something that can give this thing the ability to expand and contract a little bit. Now, since they don't have lungs like us, maybe you want to add a couple little breathing holes or something like that in there. And we will come in and add that little poisonous stinger. Okay, so let's just keep going here. So now let's come in. Let's put that in. Make that feel like that form is inserting into the other form. Have some fun with that. So the one thing that I do try to think about a little bit as I'm working on insects or any kind of animal are even my relationships and how I've sometimes dealt with different things. And... <clears throat> One thing that I do honestly believe is that beetles, insects, are absolutely beautiful creatures. And they're also very strong, which is kind of amazing to me. And I don't know how many of you have gone in and picked up a big old um, stag beetle. And he can actually almost practically push your fingers apart with the strength that he has. And then the leg is gonna come down. And if you want to, like with most beetles, you're gonna sometimes have that little bit of a claw at the end. You're gonna have this, and then you have the little segmented, which will give you more flexibility and moving in there. The bigger joint is up in here. It's gonna come down, try to give something so that this looks like it can rock back into that. So let's do this. Let's come in here, erase that out. And put a little bit more of a feeling like a joint, like when you'd see a suit of armor. You're going to see how this thing rotates into that and goes down into, you know. So those two forms will relate one to each other, and they can also move around. So we'll take that same attitude, and we'll start to put that here. So I can almost create a feeling of a joint 
which is going to have almost a little bit more of a feeling of the well, you know, when you sit down and you're, if you've ever had a crab or a lobster dinner, you know, my problem is, is that I end up playing with the food too long. All right, so let's just add a couple little spikes on here for protection. If it was a mantis, maybe there'd be a set of spikes in here that he would fold up and have that kind of a reaction in there. Okay, so now we're going to come in. Let's just create a little bit of a shape to that. We'll bring this down. And then what we'll do is we'll bring this down hard. Let this flare out. And then let these joints kind of move more as if they are flatter and almost foot-like. So we're going to have that kind of a characteristic on this little puppy. Now, we could make the back leg, if we want to, a little bit heavier, just so it looks like that might be a jumper, or it might be able to give him some kind of a lift, or anything that, the, you know, to move. And for me, I guess I've always liked the whole attitude of sometimes that nature gives us those little spikes and those little forms that come around. And we'll add a few more, kind of feeling of what's going on in here. And then once again, let's come down and we'll give this that sort of flat feeling that this little guy, once again, will have that kind of little pad or that little foot that's going to come down and hold that there. So now if we come across to right about here, that other arm might come out, come down, and do something like this. So we get a little gesture. We think about the joint. Joint arm coming down. One, two, three. This one might be going back that way to a joint and then back down. And then how that's kind of also shooting out there. Back over here. One, two, three three and we can think of almost like a little flat base here that he might be standing on so we can come up with that so let's come in here now and we'll add a few more little or try to get the feeling of maybe something that might be you know plate like plate armor that's going to give some kind of movement to this little guy so as we come in, we can get the feeling that, okay, he can expand and contract, or if he is shedding a skin, that sometimes it would also give him better flexibility to let certain pieces and parts come across, you know, each other so that they can split and break, and it's not always just one big, long shape. So let's put in this leg. Let's come down here. We got to think about the back of the joint. That knee, this cap is in the front here, so that means that might be back in a little bit. This might have a little bit of a tip in here. So now we come down, and once again, we are shooting out at a different angle. So we kind of have that coming down. This, we would see the back side of this and those would start to move forward like that. So that leg, now he looks a little knock kneed but that's okay. You can always make him look a little more evil if you want to. And second iteration doesn't mean that, you know, everything has to be completely worked out with one. You know, a lot of times I'll sit down and see how something like this flows with me. And if I'm not happy with it, I can always make another drawing. And that's the one thing. Sometimes you need to play with those iterations to get the character and the quality of what you really kind of want to have happen. Whether it's body language or if it's... Uh, so this line is a base here, so that means that's going to come there. So that joint should end up here, which means this is going to be ending right about there, which then means that's going to be ending down here and once again shooting out 
So we have a simple shape that's going to look something like that. So let's come in here. Once again, develop that joint. Once again, develop this joint, but we're on the back side. So give it a little thing. These little guys might be pointing up as they are moving on that side. Again, this is coming down. So we're going to see the back side of that joint. One, two. And then we'd see the front, and then that leg would start to do that. Now, here's something that I'm sort of looking at as I'm looking at this. I'm asking myself, you know, you know, how are these shapes really working together? Is that kind of fun? Do I like these eyes? So let's try something here. Because you don't have to keep everything that you've drawn. But sometimes it's just kind of nice to play with those shapes. So instead of leaning them back that far, let's bring them in and give them more of a characteristic that might be something like this. Now, he doesn't quite look as silly as he did just a few minutes ago to me. So is that a better shape eye? And then what I would think about, like with crabs or even the mantises, that are going to have those big irises that are going to come up like that. But this also can look a little bit Walt Disney-esque. So I think sometimes you want to be careful that you don't have... If you want to create a certain kind of look, that it doesn't start to look... Um, how do I want to say it without too cartoony? But again, if you're trying to play with that playfulness you can see that that will sometimes do it. So let's come in here and I'll just create a little bit of a white ring around this. And just for the sake of trying something, let's push the values a little bit more also. So let's make that a little bit darker. Go in there like that. Make this a little bit darker so hopefully he's not quite as funny looking. But again, I could come in and we could create the feeling of some kind of a spike or other, you know, sticking out of the back of this so it becomes a little bit more thorny. And he's not quite looking as funny. Now, the other thing that I might do is just come in here once and let's just try taking this back a little bit and seeing if a little bit of a smaller spike there, not quite so big, would also give them a different kind of feel, which I think that works a little bit better. So all we need to do is maybe erase this a little bit more. And we're getting there. We got a completely different kind of feel for this little guy. Let's put on the marks and strokes. We've got something like that. And we've got all this going. And I can come in here and let's just create a little bit of a dark to drop this leg back and a little bit of a dark here to drop that leg back and let's do the same thing here and see what starts to happen a little bit so there's a little one little iteration that we can play with and it could be fun to try another one I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much. And if you would like to see more, please leave a comment, click like, or share below. I'm Mark Nelson. If you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe or follow button, and I'll see you next time.